Okay, to make the liner puller we have a piece of 100mm round stock it's about 27mm thick this, this scrap I found so just to get the show on the road we'll, I've got a couple of thick parallels sitting in the 6 jaw here so we'll just push this up against the parallels there And that'll keep us reasonably true so we're not having a big wobble. Ain't never good when you gotta chuck a big wobble today. And, and look at this stage, it's just about getting it fairly close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm going to machine this surface flat, machine the outside diameter to within a few thou of the inside of the bore of the liner and then I'll be able to turn it around hold it on this little shoulder we're about to make and by turning it around um, that'll let us do a recess do the hole in the center and all that um, I may do the hole now I think um, I'll start off doing the hole um, now this lip this lip here it doesn't have to be all that big now the job of the lip is to hold this puller central to the liner so this is our liner here and we have to take it down so when the when the dolly here or the the pulling plate here sits up the center here it holds it very close to center and yeah within a couple of thou and that way when we're pulling here we know that this outside edge of the puller here isn't going to damage the block or you know get too far out of whack that it's going to upset the block yet it's got enough to actually pull on the liner the liners aren't very thick um, so let's have a look 1.2 mil thick so they're not very thick at all so we need to hold, make something that sits inside the liner here yet the outside diameter clears the bore where this gets pressed in so um, there's not a lot of difference there is there but anyway we'll get it underway and um, yeah we'll go from there okay so as with most things in the turning you start off by just running across here making sure it's true
and we'll pop a centre into it. thread here is three-quarter UNC so I'll just check that to make sure yeah 0.735 so that would have been three-quarter oops give the camera a bash Lance she's cool give everyone a headache So, the drill I've got here, I'm, I'm going to go slightly oversized so um, the bar's got a place to, um, what's the best word for it, centralise I suppose. So I'll bring that in there, might slow old Gertie down a bit. It's raining outside, so it's a good day to do a bit of machining. Okay, so that's our hole through the middle for this thread to make its way through. So we need a fair bit of clearance there so it can set up. We do have a little bearing down this other end that um, takes a lot of the thrust, saves it dragging on the bottom. So we turn a little groove to put this bearing in, in the back, not this side here. So I might just deburr that. And 
we'll have to find a size for this here. Okay, so I've done a little tidy up run here, a tidy up pass, and look, it didn't matter what, what that was, um, it ended up being 98.53. So on the DRO up there, you can see the top line, 98.53. So I've set the DRO up, so we should be able to get close to our desired run. Now, when I measure the liner here, I get 91.56. There, uh, where are we? 91.59. Hang on, I'll just. But the spec on the inside of the liner is 91.46. So I'm presuming, and look, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm presuming at the 91.46 is when the line is pressed in, it'll come in just a little bit. So I'm going to turn this lip down here to 91.46. So hopefully it's a nice snug fit in the line that's already pressed into the in, yeah, into the line that's already pressed into the block that we've got to get out. So a little bit loose isn't too bad. Um, it's better having a little bit loose than too tight. So what I'll do now, I'll just run, do a few passes, and I'll get that down to the Three. We're sitting at 900 RPMs. Because it's so big, I might drop it back to 640. I might try the other 640, not the 1400.
Okay, so I've got that down to, I'll just do a quick check. Where are we? Yeah, 91.9 uh, 39.4 so that's okay the 0.6 of a mil I'm, I can wear that I'd rather a little bit loose and a little bit tight and you'll see that I took the tool up and then when I was coming in and out I let it sit in a little bit further so what I was looking to do was with the radius of the of the lathe tool um, it's point it's two mil so um, actually it's one mil it's point two so I've just put a tiny little undercut there just so when the liner goes on um, I'm not sitting on a little chamfer So that looks like it's sitting there good. Actually, that's a nice fit. I've got it turned around. There's about a two millimetre gap down in the back here that um, that will give us a bit of clearance there for the tool. So you can see I can just sit the tip of the vernier in there. So, yeah, we start off with facing and dropping a... Um, a run across here just to clean any scale off to give us a starting point for the deal. Okay, that's good enough for there for the moment. Um, nothing goes on this. This is just to keep it parallel, keep it looking okay. This tip's a bit blunt, but doing a bit of rusty old scale, it can stay blunt. We're not going to get too excited. <laughs> done our test run there so we haven't touched the tool at all where are we I better turn it on eh turn him on zeroing 
The verniers are good enough for these jobs. Only 8.6, I believe. Give you a hit again. Come on, blue. No lip there. So that's 98.99 it was. So if I set the DRO to X2 98.99, enter. We should get it really close there and um, we'll try and see how we go from there. Now when I just look at my phone quickly here, um, I don't know, yeah look you won't be able to see that, I don't think. But yeah, 91.49 and 96.67, the OD of liner number 40432, so that's that one there. So 96.67, so we'll probably aim for, yeah, perhaps 96 neat, and that'll give us a little bit of clearance down the outer bore. Um, yeah, um... Yeah, 0.1 of a mil here is four thou, so yeah, so it should be right. That'll give us a little bit of clearance. So I'll, well, I'll aim for 96.6, and that should give us some clearance down the block. So, all right, let's clean out in here a little bit. If excuse the lay, it's a bit of a mess. I rushed in and did a job the other day and rushed off again without cleaning it or anything. I was just I was just in a hurry, so being a rainy day I should take time later and probably fix that. But anyway, we'll just move on with this. done things right we should be sitting pretty close on 97 there 96.98 okay so we might actually drop to 96.5 I think that would just give us a little bit of clearance in the ball but still give us enough now this sharp edge here um, we want a sharp edge the the slightest of chamfers um, but anyway, we'll just see how we go.
So I'm hoping that's around 96.5. Ninety six point four nine. One four eight possibly. Okay, so that's a good thing. Now see that doesn't quite add up to me. The liner. I think that book's wrong, has to be wrong. As you can see the difference there. So the thing to do would be ninety three point six here. Oh, you can't see that ninety three point seven. And they're saying this is the line, huh? So the book has to be wrong. Just has to. Okay, well the plot thickens. You can't see that. Oh, but in that corner there, I'll try and get a picture of that about here. Um, in the proper Perkins manual, it says 93.71 to 93.74 millimetres is the outside diameter of the liner. So, if we run it, say, 93.5 mil, head for 93.5, um, that should give us a little bit of clearance. It should give us enough meat to pull the liner up, no worries. And yeah, I think we'd be okay from there. So, yeah, the, the Sparex book with the liner, um, the measurements for the 40432 liner, it has to be wrong. Um, the liner I pulled out of the box doesn't match what their figures say, and the liner I pulled out of the box actually matches what it should be. So, we'll drop this down to around 93.5. Okay, just a quick test here. We should be coming pretty close to 94 mil there. I'll just bash you around again. We have 93.9. So, this one here, we'll just try and go down to. We'll try 90, 
93.555. We'll just try it at there and see what happens. There's not a lot of lip there, but if we keep it, actually we might try and keep it on the fatter side out here if we can. So we're going for 93.6. Okay, let's see what we have. Only 3.55. Yeah, it's a little bit under what I was hoping to do, but anyway. Oh, 5.8, 5, 5.6. So, well, that'll give us the clearance that we need. Now, Yeah, look, that's good. You wouldn't want it any. You, know, you, you don't want it tight, dragging up the ball. You want it nice and loose. So we might just pop a little bit of a chamfer on this top edge here. We don't want a chamfer on this bottom edge. We want that a nice square edge. not to be a sharp edge. Now we do have to deal with this edge here. Now I'm just not sure we should be able to peel that off I'm hoping. I might grab something so that don't cut my bloody finger off. And that'll give us a fairly sharp edge, but I'll tidy that edge up in a little while. So, next cab off the rank for this one. You get the tail stock out of the road. Pop a board far in. Um, you can see where this needle goes here. I'd actually like just to put a little recess just to take this out of bearing, just to just to keep this in the centre. So it while, we're, while we're turning it, it doesn't want to drag up the side here. Now there's a little bit of burr there at the moment, we don't care about that. Um, we need to... We need to give ourselves some clearance for this washer. And yeah, look, that's 30 millimetres. Can't see that. I'm trying to measure and look, and yeah. So it's 30 mil. So we're just going to drop a little recess in here, only a millimetre or two thick, um, just to hold the um, hold the whole stone in place, really. It'd be real good if I knew where my boring butter was. Here we go. Stop now. Stop looking over it. drawn around that shouldn't I just so we've got a bit of a um, I'll do a little cut and we'll measure cut and measure Lance
press zero on the DRO, we just check what our cut was just then. 21.3. So if we go 0, 21.3, enter. By the time this little tip, or the DRO reads 30 mil, we should be pretty well where we need to be. Tidy up this inside edge here. So we'll just go and touch off, then we'll just clean it up until we get to 30. So we do have to deal with this edge here and just have a look, so we'll just undo it out of the chuck. It's just a sharp little burr there. I would like to keep it pretty sharp there. a nice sharp edge I believe. I may, I think I may just bring it in here and do a tidy, a quick little tidy up if I can. Now, I'll get the Okay, 
that should have a pretty true to the machine surfaces. Hey, there's the drop. But what I might do, that looks really good. I might just bring the parting tool in just to make a slight relief so I know I have a nice sharp edge there. So So I'm not touching this surface here, we're going to leave that, but just the shoulder, the shoulder that's a little bit frayed there, I'm going to come in, move that down say half a millimetre and take it under this surface half a millimetre possibly. So that way we know we have a good sharp edge. give it just a slight polish on this edge here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it or not. This lip here, around the edge there. You can see the surface comes down to line us up, and then there's a slight undercut from the parting tool, and then a nice sharp edge here. So that makes sure that when the liner sits on it, um, we're not trying to distort the bottom of the liner anywhere so that should fit in there nicely like that okay I'll put some measurements up and yeah, look we'll just see how we go eh? it's nice and thick we have the, the locator there for the bearing but look that'll do for this video on making the tool um, next time you see this tool hopefully we've got it up the bum of the block and we're dropping liners out